Hey you guys, so welcome to my channel. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me today. Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. If you are brand new, then welcome. If you're returning, then welcome back. No. welcome to my channel if you're brand new then welcome if you're returning then welcome back so as you can tell from the title of this video is going to be about my one year post-op bbl journey today i finally hit one year it really doesn't feel like it it feel like i've maybe got the surgery two or three years ago that's how good i'm feeling that's how well i'm doing um in this video i wanted to talk about how i'm feeling what i'm doing how i'm healing what scars i have left um also of course those are really simple and quick questions that i can answer um things that we can talk about so what i'm going to do toward the end of the video is go on ahead and um answer the top 10 questions that i've been getting whether it's on snapchat or messenger facebook messenger or instagram or in the comments 10 questions that I've been asked a trillion, gazillion, quasquillion, I don't know if that's even a freaking number. That's how many times I was asked these questions, y'all. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to start with the weight gain. I did gain a few pounds since my surgery. Whenever I did get my surgery last year, I'm pretty sure I went under the knife weighing 154, maybe 153, somewhere around there. I think it was 154, I'm pretty sure. So I weighed myself actually yesterday for the purposes of this video, and I weigh now 160 even. So basically in the course of the year, I have gained six pounds, um, which honestly isn't terrible. And of course, whenever you, you get the surgery, they're gonna move the fat cells from your back and your arms and your neck and your stomach, <laughs> wherever you had them remove it from, whatever that's where they're gonna move it from and they're gonna put it of course in your hips and your butt or wherever you ask them to put the fat at so whenever they do that then of course whenever you do go to gain the weight then where there are more fat cells where there are more fat cells that what that's what hey tongue twister where there are more fat cells that's the areas that are prone to get bigger faster if that makes sense. not saying that you have to diet or anything because I don't diet or do anything crazy to maintain my BBL. Um, just try to watch it, you know, try to watch somewhat the stuff you eat because you don't want to, you know, start walking around and look like a little ant. You know what I'm saying? Like some people, yeah. Okay, so whenever it comes to how I feel, um, I feel really good. Like I said at the beginning, it honestly doesn't feel like I got the surgery a year ago. Um, but I also said that in my other video as well, like I don't feel like I just got a, sur a major surgery, you know, like I went, I went back to work, I'm pretty sure after two weeks, uh, after getting the surgery. So, I mean, it didn't really kill me too bad. As you can see in my eight hours post-op video, I was up walking, walking around and whatnot, um, eight hours after getting off the table. So, I mean, I feel good. I can go to the gym if I wanted. I can go run if I want. I can go skip if I want. I can go swim if I want. Nothing happens. Um, when it comes to the scarring, I'm honestly a trillion percent sure the scars are not going to go away. I don't care if I'm 60 or 80. Um, it's pretty much like scar tissue. So, I showed this one a lot. Like right there. So, I have one of those right here also on the other side and then on the top of my butt and then on the bottom cheeks of my butt so those are where all my scars are they aren't like killer scars there's nothing that's gonna like you know make my body look terrible or anything you can always go get like a tattoo to cover it if you really wanted to it's not that big of a deal um you could try cocoa butter i don't like cocoa butter so that's probably why i haven't used it i don't know Okay, so whenever it comes to how I look as of now, of course, once again, in one of my other videos that I posted, I'm pretty sure it was six months post-op, um, I showed you guys my stomach, and for the new people, I'm about to show you again. 
um, my stomach on basically how I personally messed up my BBL. Um, I did not wear my Faja as long as I was supposed to. Honestly, it's so hard to wear that thing. Okay, so right here, is my stomach and then you can see like I turn to the sides kind of like perfect you can see like right here right there a little slope thing and of course like I always wear my pants like right there so it kind of fits perfect like you can see what I mean like right under or near my belly button so this is my body now, obviously, one year post-op. You can see right here also, like, where my hips... Oh, and this little... In this outfit, it kind of looks like I have hips, but I really don't, y'all. Like, it's really still, like, a little SpongeBob shape. I really want to go and get around two eventually sometime, but... Put some more buttons by... So, yeah, I think it looks, um, like, really natural and whatnot. Like, nothing, like, you know, looks too bad. I think it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and get to these 10 questions. I actually wrote them down on my phone in my notes. So question number one that I've gotten a billion times was who's your doctor? So my doctor is Dr. Jonathan Fisher, who works at, or used to work at Jolie's Plastic Surgery. He is board certified. Um, and actually since I've been to him, he has gotten his own practice. Um, I will put his new link down to the bottom so that you guys can find him and look him up if you really wanted to. So you can find his new surgery building he's really good I totally recommend him my next question that I got several times was um do they ask for credit checks so no they do not ask for credit checks um of course you can pay um via check or debit or mastercard whatever but I'm telling you now um your surgery has to be completely paid off before your surgery day um Will you get another one? Have you been considering it? Yes, I have been considering it. Yes, I do want another one. But when I do go, I don't think I'm going to get a full-blown BBL. I'm pretty sure that if I do end up going back, it'll be just for hip fillers. Simply hip fillers. Like, I don't need no more butt. Like I said, I'm only 5'3". I don't need, you know, a toaster oven on my butt in my butt which brings me to my next question they wanted to know how much was it for the surgery so when i went it was sixty five hundred dollars when i did pay the first time i paid five hundred dollars to hold my surgery day um in the two weeks prior to surgery when it all had to be paid off i sent them six thousand dollars and it's paid off the whole thing next question is did you get the cell saver yes i did um from all the other videos that I've seen from people who have gotten the surgery and have gotten the cell saver and has not gotten a cell saver, I honestly seen that people who have gotten a cell saver, they heal a lot better and faster. So yes, I did get it, but honestly, I didn't have a choice. Honestly, if I had the choice to not get the cell saver, I wouldn't have gotten the cell saver. I was forced to get the cell saver um, because I was having issues with my iron. So they told me that they did not feel comfortable performing the surgery on me unless I were to get the cell saver. My next question that I got was, do they provide your faha? So yes, they do provide your faha, they do provide your boards and your foam. Now, I do recommend you buying um, a second faha, which I'm pretty sure it was $100, and they had them, of course, on hand there. Um, I think you need a second faha because you're gonna bleed all over that first one and you have to keep it on constantly there's no way for you to take it off and wash it and dry it obviously you're not gonna be able to wear it so it's better just to have two so whenever one gets blood soaked you can go on ahead and wash that one and put on another one so you'll constantly be able to keep on your faha and do everything you need to do 
So the next one is how long before you can sit? So you actually can sit down after three weeks. That's what they recommend. So of course you want to know what do you do uh, before then, right? Um, so whenever I went to go eat or something like that, I would just like lay on my stomach, which of course is very uncomfortable because your stomach is super tight too. So you can lay on your stomach or whenever I like ate, I would kneel at the dinner, not the dinner table, at the living room table and that's how I lived for three weeks. Yeah, and if I did get tired of all that and I might wanna, you know, push it a little bit, I might get like a pillow and try to like sit on my feet type deal so it's not really completely sitting but just because I'm tired of sitting on my knee or standing on my knees or I don't know how to put that being on my knees I don't know <laughs> um so the next thing is should I get a recovery home honestly no I don't recommend you getting a recovery home getting a recovery home is an extra I don't even remember the price I'm pretty sure it's like an extra thousand dollars if not more me and my mom ended up getting a regular smegula degula hotel room and she was there and I was just fine. If I needed anything from Walmart, my medicine, I don't know, french fries and Chick-fil-A down the street, a Popeye's burger, burger, Popeye's chicken sandwich or something, my mom went I was calling me. My mom will go and get it. Um, anything that you needed, you can do really on your own. You don't need to pay another extra, what, $125 a day for a nurse on top of paying for the recovery house. Save your money. You really don't need it. No, I do not recommend a recovery house to get to the short answer. My next question is, how do you maintain? So honestly, I don't. I really don't. Before I got the surgery, I had a fast metabolism. Everybody in my family, for the most part, is small. So I haven't really been having an issue with maintaining my surgery. Yes, I did gain a couple pounds. It might sound crazy too, but I've always been solid. So yeah, I gained six pounds, but I can look at myself in the mirror, anybody else look at me and I can't see where I gained the weight at. You know, like it's, it's okay. I, I haven't really been maintaining. I did post a BBL maintain video, how to maintain my BBL. Cause sometimes I do go to the gym and stuff, but I haven't been doing nothing crazy to maintain my video. My last question is, how long before you went back to work? So I ended up going back to work two weeks after getting off the table. Um, I think it'll be different for everybody. It depends on where you work and what your work environment is. At the time I was working at the prison. Um, so yes, it did kind of involve a lot of bending and walking and stuff like that for me. But um, honestly, for example, if you have like an office job and you have to sit down, I think you might have to wait three weeks plus because you can't sit down all day. You don't look crazy at the office standing up all day. But at the prison, no lie, I stood up all day. So yeah, um, I hope you guys found this video um, useful in a way. Like I said, it's not really a lot that has changed since my six month post-op to my one year. I don't regret it at all. I think if anybody wants to get the surgery, get it. Get it, get it, get it. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you have any more questions, go ahead and comment down below. Message me on Instagram or Snapchat. Whatever feels better for you. If I didn't answer some more questions, please let me know. Um, if there's any other video that you think I can make about a BBL, um, just let me know as well. I'll be glad to make it for you and answer more questions. Have an awesome day. Thank you guys for watching.